For 19-year-old Zach Anderson, it looks like it's been an idyllic summer. Relaxing like any other teenager with his family on the St. Joe River. But looks can be deceiving. This summer is hardly normal for Zach. In fact, his parents say Zach can't even live in their house anymore because his 15-year-old brother lives here too. And that's not all. Like using the internet, going to like, if you're bored, going to walk around in a park or something. Can't go to a mall. Yeah, I can't go to a mall to buy clothes or anything like that. All because Zach is listed in his state's sex offender registry. It's like I'm an outcast from society with all the things that I have put on me. Here's what happened. Zach went on a racy dating app called Hot or Not, hoping to meet a girl. He did. They had sex, and that's when the problems began. How old did she say she was? She had told me that she was 17. But she lied. She was actually 14. By law, he had committed a sex crime. He was arrested and convicted. Now Zach is on the same list of sex offenders as child molesters and pedophiles. And his parents say that's a colossal mistake. When you heard those words, that your son was a sex offender, what was your reaction? It's a blatant lie. It's not true. It doesn't even fit our lifestyle. It doesn't fit how we raised our kids. Even the girl's mother appeared in court, testifying that she didn't want Zach labeled as a sex offender because, quote, he's really not. We also obtained this letter that the girl in question gave Zach's family. I'm sorry I didn't tell you my age, she writes. It kills me every day knowing you are going through hell and I'm not. I want to be in trouble and not you. Did it ever enter your mind at any time that she could be underage? No, not at all. And was the sex consensual? Yeah, yeah. But even if the girl admits she lied about her age and the sex was consensual, as she did in court, it's not a defense in the eye of current sex offender laws. And that's why the judge and prosecutor in Zach's case didn't let him off the hook. Judge Dennis Wiley, angry that Zach had used the Internet to meet a girl, said, quote, That seems to be part of our culture now. Meet, have sex, sayonara totally inappropriate behavior. There is no excuse for this whatsoever. He sentenced Zach to 90 days in jail, five years probation, and 25 years on the sex offender registry. Is that you? Are no. you a sex offender? Not at all. What's happening to Zach sounds unusual, but it's not. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, about a quarter of the 850,000 people on the sex offender registry across the nation were under 18 when convicted. The problem, say experts, is the sex offender registry is one size fits all. Everyone on it is treated as if they pose the same threat, whether they're a predatory child rapist or a teenager who had sex with his girlfriend. If we caught every teenager that violated our current law, we'd lock up 30 or 40 percent of the high school. Uh, we're, we're kidding ourselves. Former Michigan judge William Buell has been trying to fix the sex offender registry for two decades. He says adding teens just takes away resources from monitoring the truly dangerous. They take that example and say, oh, boy, we got to watch this guy. And so we'll apply that to everybody. And it just doesn't make any sense. Even convicted sex offenders, the very people the registry was set up to monitor, tell us their type of criminal behavior and mindset is vastly different from some of these teens. He's not the one that we're going to have to fear. Um, he's simply a teenager. Ted and Rose Rodarm were both convicted of molestation in separate incidents 20 years ago and are part of a ministry now for sex offenders. The registry has become so diluted that you can't identify the truly dangerous, and that in itself is dangerous. 
So Zach is left wondering about what the rest of his life will be like. The weight of his sentencing came crashing down his first day back at church after he was released from jail. He just didn't look right. And I said, are you okay? And he just shook his head. We went outside and he just started crying. And I said, what's the matter? And he just said, I don't know who I can talk to. I don't know whose purse, whose hand I can shake. You know, I feel like everybody's looking at me, you know, and to have to deal with that and to see the that. The shame. Yeah, the shame. I think it, that's the biggest issue is the shame of it. To me, it honestly doesn't really seem real to me. It seems like a bad dream that I haven't woke up from yet. In Elkhart, Indiana, Kira Phillips, CNN.